everybody. Thanks for being here. This is going to be a little Sephora haul. I really have not shopped at Sephora in the longest time. I don't have one very close to where I live and I just, I, I more frequently order from Ulta it seems like online just because of the drugstore high-end mix. But this time around there were just some new things that I really wanted to try on Sephora's site so I'll go through everything in this video. Also, my samples. The samples really kick butt. I mean, I don't know how long it's been this way that Sephora has had such great samples, but I got this little Bobbi Brown thing that has a couple of the light peach correctors. I've never tried these, the Anastasia concealers. There's four shades there. I got a trio of Bite Agave lip mask samples, the Roses de Chloe perfume sample, and the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea water foundation samples. Um, the light to neutral, I wore that yesterday and I'm wearing it again today, and I could probably get one more use just out of that sample. But it is the epitome of liquid foundation. It's very thin, kind of runny, liquidy, but surprisingly good coverage for that thin consistency. So I really like the way it's looking. I don't know that I would pursue it in the full size simply because another foundation I'm trying now is from Shea Moisture and it's the Weightless Shea Serum Foundation. I wear this in the shade Nude and it's also one of those thin, liquidy foundations, surprisingly good coverage. Only this one, I think, uh, provides a little extra moisture compared to the Tarte. But anyway, I just love the fact that, you know, there were multiple shades here. Uh, the top one, that light neutral, definitely worked for me, and I can get multiple tries out of one of those. And I apologize, by the way, for the background. Um, I just kind of scooted a bunch of clutter out of the way, but there's still a little clutter showing over here. I am reorganizing, like, complete makeup, storage, organization, overhaul. So that's probably a future video, but I'm kind of midway through it. What I find with having a child is that you start a project, you don't necessarily complete the project in one day. It's kind of a piece by piece, I'll do these drawers, then maybe when I get a little spare time I'll do these other drawers, so it's coming together slowly but surely. But moving on with the haul, another thing I really wanted to try was this product from Tarte. It's the Wipeout Color Correcting Palette. So color correcting, of course, all the rage. They give you the little guide that tells you what to do with these various shades. So green is typically used to count counteract redness. You've got kind of an orangey shade that they recommend for like the deepest, darkest, sort of purpley bluish toned circles. You've got a couple of kind of lighter peach shades, a contour color, and also this yellow. And if you really wanted to go big and use all of those shades, there's one example of what you could look like. But um, I really think with color correcting, it's important to look at your own face, kind of study what your own needs are, just because somebody else corrects their skin a certain way with certain products, uh, it doesn't mean you necessarily need to do the same. For me, even before I got this palette, I knew the ones that I was most interested in was everything going on down here at the bottom because I knew these peachy type colors would hopefully be a lot like Benefit Erase Paste and just give me kind of an alternative to try and compare to that. Also, the yellow, very brightening, but it's not too yellow, so I thought that's going to be great. And the contour shade is a really, really nice tone to work with. So I am big on the peachy correctors on the under eye area, but going deeper than that, you know, there are some orangey ones floating around out there. I've tried one from Becca that's very, you know, pigmented and orangey, and I've seen people, you know, even of my skin tone using that kind of thing on their dark circles. For me, I think there's kind of a point where, you know, you're a little bit too light, then you're in the sweet spot of actually correcting the color, and I think you can actually go too dark at times. And for me, maybe my under eye darkness isn't as dark as I might think it is, and I don't feel like that ends up doing a whole lot. And I think these, uh, or these two right over here, really end up being just right. I think if you're a really deep or rich skin tone, um, that's where I've seen shades like this really come in handy. Uh, but as far as the consistency of these creams, really nice. You know, they're creamy without feeling greasy. They're very pigmented. I don't feel like I have to pack on a whole heck of a lot. And today, since I was trying yet another corrector type product, because there are a few things like that in this haul, um, the shade I used was the yellow. Um, so I used a different corrector thing on the under eye, and then I kind of dabbed the yellow kind of in this area that I want to brighten, also down the nose. And I used the contour shade a little bit in the hollows of the cheeks and around the hairline. However, yesterday I really used the whole shebang and I felt like, you know, these 
shades right down in here. One is just a little bit more yellowy than the other. This is a little bit more peach. This has a bit more of a classic beige look to it, but they worked really nicely when I used them yesterday. I just felt like that was a little bit overboard for my skin. Now, another color correcting thing that I picked up that I did end up using today as that peachy corrector step for the under eye is this Smashbox color correcting stick, and I got Look Less Tired Light. So this is kind of a, you know, soft peach shade. It's a little bit more um, deep and orangey in comparison to the Benefit Erase Paste in Medium. Sorry for all the Erase Paste references. That's just what I use all the time, and I know I've gotten many of you onto using that as well. So when I reference that, it's just, you know, to give you something to think about in comparison. But this is a pencil that you would sharpen. It does come with a sharpener. It's extremely creamy. Absolutely no complaints about the consistency of this. So I just kind of drew this on my darkest areas. I also used it, kind of pinpointed it on any kind of spot, like age spot, sunspot looking place. This would have been the kind of thing when I was dealing with melasma hardcore, I would have put it on those kinds of areas. You could blend it out with a brush, but I really liked just, you know, dabbing a beauty blender right over that. Are you ready for the third color correcting product I got? Um, I got this Urban Decay Naked Skin uh, Color Correcting Fluid in Peach. So wand applicator, just like the other Naked Skin concealers. And yeah, it's a light peach tone, but it definitely has enough of a uh, peachy pigment to it. It really sets itself apart from just a normal skin tone concealer. And I will uh, put the Smashbox next to this and it's fascinating how different these are in tone. Smashbox, much more yellowy and uh, the Urban Decay has a lot more pink to it. Yesterday I used the Urban Decay just as kind of a spot concealer. I didn't really get all up on the under eye area just yet. And it did okay just in terms of covering a couple dark spots here and there. I'm kind of curious to see how this would be when used really full on like all throughout this under eye area and then possibly using a powder on top to bake it because I feel like the regular Naked Skin Concealer really does set and baking isn't even really necessary with that so much because that concealer doesn't stay dewy and tacky and doesn't really require a lot of setting. So I'm curious as to whether this will perform the same way there. So this is not a full on review. I just wanted to tell you what experiences I've had with these so far. Don't be surprised if you see a video coming out in the near future where I am comparing um, these various color correcting products, probably with special attention to the peachy tones because that's kind of where I specialize. <laughs> that's kind of the color correction I need the most. A couple of Beauty Blender products that I wanted to get. This Micro Mini Correct 4. Okay, I, I was sucked in. I know these aren't going to like do special, specialized color correction depending on the shade you use. They just, you know, put out four micro minis in various pretty pastel colors. Wouldn't this be great in someone's Easter basket? But seriously though, I have fallen in love with my micro mini. This is the size of one that's been saturated and it actually is green. But I use this all up in my color correcting today so it's looking a little more, I don't know beige, but it's so incredibly soft, really nice for that delicate kind of under eye area. I feel like a lot of times with brushes, I would pull that area a lot. And once you start using something like this, you realize just how gentle you can be. So if you're not familiar with the way beauty blender type things work, you get them completely saturated, take them to the sink and squeeze out all the excess water, but you see them, you know, change in size. They get so much bigger once you do that. And then I kind of wring them out with a towel and then just go to work, use them wherever you need to blend for the micro mini. It's really just ideal for the under eyes for me. So I was glad to have a few extras now. Super cute. Also, I didn't even know that this existed until someone tweeted me about it, but they have a beauty blusher. So this is a beauty blender for blush and it's kind of gray in color. And this one has also been saturated. It's drying out just a little bit. I feel like it was just a little bit bigger than this earlier, but here's like regular beauty blender all soaked up with water and that's what that looks like. And I would say this feels quite a bit softer compared to the regular Beauty Blender. It feels more like the texture of the Micro Mini, which I've found to be just much more soft, just a little less coarse to the feeling of the sponge. And I still think the Beauty Blender is, is very soft, you know, by these standards, but this is just even more squishy. There's a little more bounce to it. I can see why this would be a very like cream blush friendly type 
application tool. So I used this uh, yesterday and today for blush. Today I experimented with a ColourPop blush. Um, normally with cream blushes I would use my e.l.f. small stipple brush. You guys know that because I talk that thing to death. And it really does work well. I'm not saying I absolutely needed this, but I used it with this ColourPop blush today. It's the uh, K-Pop blush in Flushed. So a nice coral and this did work very, very well. Something I've noticed about some of the ColourPop blushes that I've had in my collection for a bit longer is they get just a little more dry and the texture on these is kind of like a cream, but not a sticky wet cream, okay? So while an e.l.f. small stipple brush can do great with those, I feel like as they become a bit more dry, they can be a little more resistant to being picked up with that brush. And this seems to pick up that pigment very easily, and I like to use just the butt end of this. Uh, that's what I did for my application today. And then I also use this ColourPop highlight. This is in Fanny Pack. And I went in with more just the side of it and went around like that, and it did very nicely there too. Again, it's like a jumbo sized micro mini. Just the texture of it feels very much like that. It's crazy, like how many years did I go without using beauty blenders at all and now I'm like all about them. Do we need a video on the various blenders and the different ways I like to use them? Let me know. Moving on to eyes. I got a new eye palette. It's from Smashbox and it's called Photo Matte Eyes and uh, it does come with a brush. Kind of funny how in that Perfect Palette 2 tag video there was a question about what do you want included with your eyeshadow palette, brush, eyeliner, or nothing and um, this one actually has a decent brush after I knocked most brushes that come in palettes. It's got a brow brush and also this um, just kind of borderline flat, fluffy, you know, could be a crease brush, could be a lid brush kind of thing. But that's kind of the neat thing about this palette. They point out that these could be brow colors as well as eyeshadows. And there's this little guide here on the back where there's different configurations of dots under each shade and it kind of tells you, okay, this is uh, an eyeshadow, this could be used as a liner, these could be used as brow products. I mean, you could probably kind of figure that out on your own. But it is a nice sturdy feeling palette. There is a mirror. They're a nice size mirror um, and I do like the shade variety you know I feel like you got a lot of cool shades to work with some warm shades I don't know that I necessarily like this better than um, like my Too Faced natural matte palette I do think this offers a little more versatility over here with these matte cool shades to work with also Smashbox does tend to be very like educational with their kits like this so there's all kinds of info here on how to work with different eye shapes and also different uh, brow shapes too for today's look, I did a mix of like these two shades in my crease and this is what's giving me all the darkness in the outer corner. That's that like kind of dark, um, sort of warm reddish brown. I also used some of this lightest shade on the innermost part of my lid, just kind of lightly there. Today I'm kicking myself because I forgot to use these as brow shades, but yesterday I did and the colors I used were these two. Um, and they work just fabulously. They're so pigmented, you do kind of need to use a light hand and if you want them to have a little bit more longevity, I think, and kind of clinging in there to the brows, you might consider getting a clear wax pencil. I know Milani makes one, Anastasia has them. You just kind of stroke that through your brows first and then um, use the angled side of this brush with whatever powder you want to use and it works so nicely. I do really like that brow brush as well. It's extremely stiff, the cut is just perfect. Smashbox does make some really nice brushes. Last thing that I got is um, uh, lip related and it's the Sephora favorites give me some nude lip and I think the first time I went looking for this it was out of stock but now it's back and it contains let's see one two three four five different nude or neutral lip options here and there was only one product in here that I had tried before so I was super excited to get this the one that I'm wearing today out of this kit is actually just the liner the Marc Jacobs Primrose lip liner really love this but was excited to see just how similar this formula is to the NYX slide-on liners that I've been raving about these days. You know, it goes on so smoothly, um, really evenly and easily as far as a lip liner is concerned. Um, the nice thing about these is that they do just twist up. With the NYX you have to sharpen them, but I love the shade. I was comparing this to Nude Suede Shoes from NYX, and that liner, while I thought it would be the closest one from NYX's line, it is quite a bit lighter than this, but the formula, the feel, the texture, the way they kind of set 
set and aren't quick to transfer off, you know, that is very similar between the two lines. I'll continue looking in my collection and see if I can find an exact color dupe of that shade because it is a really great color. I just love in these samplers how they give so many different, you know, different brands but also different textures and consistencies of products. So you get this Nude Sticks Lip and Cheek Pencil in Whisper. This is the one thing that I already had in a double-ended uh, nude sticks. It was Whisper on one end and then uh, what was the other shade? Like a deeper kind of rosier shade on the opposite side. But that's really my kind of nude right there. Very easy to wear. You get a NARS lipstick in this set in the shade Dulce Vita and this is kind of your rosy nude I suppose. I'll do a swatch of that here. This I was wearing this the other day. It was more sheer than I expected and I started pressing hard and I think I pressed. Don't you hate when this happens? Like you press the stick over and then you get that little line on the side. But yeah, I like this color, but it is quite a bit more sheer than I was expecting from NARS. You're getting a Laura Mercier lipstick. This is in the shade Milky Way, and this seems like more of a brownish tan nude. I'll swatch that here. Another kind of shiny cream formula lipstick. I generally like nudes that are more like these that have a little bit more pink tone to them, but I'll try to give that one a go. And then finally, um, you get one of these Tartist lip paints in the shade Namaste. This seems like a very very lightweight, moussey kind of texture, and there's a swatch of that. Looks like a beautiful, um, soft pink, but not too, you know, cool and cotton candy-like. It's still uh, kind of in that nude neutral family. But that is my Sephora haul, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for putting up with my little bit of congestion you might be hearing in my voice. I don't know if it's springtime, allergy time, or what. But thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye!